March 17th, 1910. This is Gene Ward taking you to Vernon, California, outside Los Angeles, where Sam Langford meets fireman Jim Flynn in a match scheduled for 45 rounds. Inside the stadium, the fighters come down the aisle. Sam Langford, wearing a white robe, is first man in the ring. He appears to be full of confidence, having gone all out in training to prepare for this fight. checks the taped hands of the man he upset only five weeks before in Los Angeles. Many fans think he can do it again. He's in top condition. Flynn holds a two-inch height advantage, standing 5'9 and a half to Langford's 5'7 and a half. The fireman outweighs Langford by a good 15 pounds, scaling 180. By today's standards, Langford could be called a boxer slugger, or he could fire TNT with either hand. His dynamic fist earned him the Nick Classic. Referee is Charlie Eiton. Both men immediately go to close quarters. Langford has a white sash around his waist. When this film was taken in 1910, the cameraman had to crank the film past the lens by hand. A far cry from today's power-driven models. Speaking of power drive, Langford has it and has gotten off to a fast start. He hasn't forgotten his loss to Flynn a little more than a month ago. The 31-year-old fireman from Hoboken, New Jersey, had 67 fights, winning 40, losing 5. He fought 12 draws and 10 no-decision bouts. Flynn was KO'd by Tommy Burns, Al Kaufman, Jack Johnson, and Sam Langford. This is the third meeting between Flynn and Langford. The Boston Tar Baby KO'd Flynn in one round in San Francisco. But in their second encounter, Flynn won the 10-round decision in Los Angeles.
end of round one, Langford has taken the play away from Flynn. Moving into round two, fast, tough Sam Langford holds the upper hand. He's shown that he can tag Flynn. In this round, we'll see Langford increase his lead. Notice how Langford cracks Flynn's defenses by not allowing Flynn to tie him up. Langford likes to punch at long range, where he can use a variety of blows. Although Langford is six years younger than the 31-year-old Flynn, he's had the greater experience. Going into this bout, Langford had 94 fights, winning 55, losing five. He fought 15 no-decision bouts, and he drew in 19. Langford began boxing eight years before, in 1902. seconds of round two, the Boston Terror gives Flynn little rest. Langford's solid punching easily carried him through rounds three and four. And now round five of the scheduled 45-round contest. Langford has applied constant pressure since the opening bell. He wants to keep Flynn at long range, where he can make full use of his tremendous punching power. Flynn's strategy, of course, is to keep in close, where he can smother the effectiveness of Langford's attack. The question is, how long can Flynn continue to tie up Langford? Before this fight, Langford trained at the Nord Junction Fight Club in Los Angeles. Sam never had any pre-fight plans. He simply went into a ring, determined to belt his man out, and fast, too. Flynn's infighting tactics have caused Langford to bide his time. Although throughout the bout, Langford has been the aggressor. At the end of round five, Langford's punching has given him a substantial lead. Round six was another short-range mauling session. But here in round seven, you'll see Flynn do more landing while he maintains his rushing maneuvers. making good use of his weight advantage here. Each man has concentrated his firepower on the body, seeking to wear down his opponent. Langford's reputation as a giant killer grew by leaps and bounds. Jack Johnson KO'd Flynn in 11 rounds in 1908, but Langford stopped Flynn in one round in their first fight, beating Johnson's time. Four years before this bout, Langford lost a 15-round decision to Jack Johnson in Chelsea, Massachusetts. Both men suffered knockdowns in that fight, but young Langford only weighed 148 pounds to Johnson's 184. Langford tried to get a return match with Johnson, but they never got together.
the end of round seven in this scheduled 45 round bout, Flynn is still trying to smother Langford's power. Langford slips, but he bounces right up and goes back to the attack. A good left hook by Flynn at the end of round seven. Langford's out in front by a wide margin. In round eight, watch for the knockout. Langford, with his back to us, has been grooming Flynn for the KO since the first round. And he's about to finish the job. Watch. A quick but devastating combination. Left and right. Puts Flynn down. Langford remains nearby because in those days, a man wasn't required to go to a neutral corner in case of a knockdown. It's all over in one minute of this eighth round. Flynn fought a game battle. He came into the ring full of high hopes and great confidence. After all, it was only five weeks before that he won a decision over Langford. Flynn was in top condition, and according to the local California newspaper of the time, he was said to be in better health than ever before in his career. Before the fight, Langford advised his friends that he would win easily. Flynn, being revived in his corner, absorbed a terrific barrage in that eighth round. Before he finally regained his senses, he tried to fight anyone who came near him. His seconds had a hard time calming him down. In his long fighting career, Langford traveled all over the world looking for competition. He fought in England and also in Australia. And always he looked forward to the day when he could schedule a return match with Jack Johnson. Flynn had suffered his second knockout by Langford while winning one decision. Then in 1923, Langford and Flynn met for the fourth time in Mexico City, and Langford stopped the fireman in the third round. It was Flynn's last fight. So, Sam Langford knocked out Jim Flynn in eight rounds. Vernon, California, March 17, 1910. Ladies and gentlemen, the jazz ambassadors of the U.S. Army Field Band.
fascinating combination, left and right. Ladies and gentlemen, the Dave Brubeck All-Star Quintet, Bill Charlap, Christian McBride, John Faddis, Bill Stewart, and Miguel Zenon. <laughs>